Thanks, guys. How's everybody doing today? Good, bad, too early, party too much last night. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this talk is called Satisfaction as a Service, and it's brought to you by Casual Connect, the Casual Games Association, and the letter S. Letter S for Satisfaction as a Service. So what's this talk about? This talk about this talk is about uh, games as a service. No, seriously. I mean, the guy who was just up here just before this was talking about all the very kind of technical, measurable metrics aspects of games as a service. But really, I think a lot of times what we do is we forget about the actual service aspect of games as a service. This is no joke. I'm going to show you why. Um, I'm also going to show you what you can do to improve uh, your, your game as a service. And I'm going to show you some common pitfalls that you can watch out for, kind of from a, you know, a psychological or a business point of view. So who am I? Oh, by the way, is anybody here super duper offended by swearing? Because I've been known to, oh, you are? You're not? You are? Oh, I shouldn't. I will never swear. I will keep it totally clean. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah, so I'm Richie Bisso, 15 years in games. Uh, like you said before, I am a designer, programmer, and producer. Just don't ask me to draw anything ever because it will not work out for you. Okay, so satisfaction as a service. Why you should care about keeping your customers satisfied. Why, why you should care about keeping your players satisfied. Um, you don't want to lose people, right? I mean, if you, who, who here is working on like a free-to-play game? Okay, you guys are, is anybody here working on a game that's just kind of like a console fire and forget game? Nobody, right? Yeah, that's this day and age. Yeah, so you, don't, you basically live and die by the number of customers you have and how those customers see you and their likelihood to spend money. So one thing you really want to avoid is customer churn, right? So customer churn is mainly due to poor quality of customer service. Of all you guys who raise your hands, raise them again. All you guys working on free to play. Okay. How many of you guys have a dedicated customer service department? You do. Uh, for those of you who don't, what are the main reasons why you do not have a customer service department? Just yell them out. Too expensive. Too expensive. Head count. Head count. Okay. Yeah. Those are all really good reasons. Um, unfortunately, those things are going to stop you guys from being able to kind of maximize your um, value add to the customer. Um, unless you actually convert somebody um, who's part of your headcount, development headcount, over to actually doing customer service at some point. So um, think about it, right? And I'm going to show you why basically that money is worth it. Uh, customers are four times more likely to leave to a competitor if a problem is service related. So somebody's playing your game, they have some sort of an issue, you have an opportunity to talk to this person and, and rectify the issue. Um, for those of you guys who do not have a dedicated customer service department, who, who handles your customer service? Who watches your reviews? You do, right? So what if the review's in like another language? What do you do? Google Translate, that's exactly what I did, perfect. Yeah, um, about how long does it take, to you, take you to respond to an issue? Hours, okay, so when you say you're checking it all the time. Perfect, that's exactly what you should be doing. Um, if somebody is not happy, they're gonna leave. And like the guy was saying before, basically there's a million and one reasons why somebody's gonna leave your game to begin with. Um, either the game's not super great, or it doesn't look great, or any, any number of reasons. But if it is great, and everything's going awesome, um, except for maybe somebody runs into a snag or they don't quite understand something in your tutorial, they're going to leave. And if you can, or they're going to, they're going to be likely to complain about that problem before they leave, but, um, <clears throat> but, and that will actually give you an opportunity to fix that problem. More reasons why you should care. 96% of unhappy customers actually don't complain. 91% uh, will leave and not come back. Uh, the good news about that is that the actual 4% who do complain are, represent, are typically representative of the, uh, of the problems, will, are typically representative of the problem set and will actually give you an idea of uh, why people, why the 96% are leaving. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to address those issues, turn around the fixes before 
uh, the 91% of the people who are unhappy and just, not, I mean, 96% of people who are unhappy and just not saying anything uh, leave and don't come back. Uh, leaving and not coming back is actually not the, not the least of your worries. Uh, I mean, it's actually the least of your worries. The biggest worry that you should have is that somebody has a bad experience with your product, right? And then they go, and then they tell all their friends about how crappy your product is. And all those people will never actually even get into the game. So you really need to be concerned about this. Uh, in terms of monetizing, this is also a big problem. 70% uh, of people who have a uh, unsatisfying, or, sorry, 70% of buying experiences based on how a customer feels they're being treated. So if there is like, let's say you're handling all the, the customer service yourself. You go on vacation for like two weeks or you get sick and you don't feel like picking up the phone or, or checking on things. Um, basically, what happens? You know, nobody, nobody's, uh, nobody's, feel, nobody's feeling like you're responding to the, the, the complaints that they have. So they're way less likely to actually monetize. Um, customers who rate your company a five on service are six times more likely to buy from you compared to those who rate you a 4.8. Who here has a five rating or like a five star rating on their game? You do? Awesome, dude. I want to play your game. <laughs> no, um, I mean, you know how hard it is, right? I mean, you guys see it every day. It's like most of us are hovering somewhere between three and five on the, uh, on the scale. Um, the difference between somebody actually um, buying something that's in your game and somebody who doesn't is 0.2% at the top end of that scale. That's extremely difficult to achieve. So again, another reason why you really should care about um, what exactly is going on with your customer service. Uh, it takes 12 positive customer service experiences to make up for a crappy experience. So you have a hard time, let's say you go online, you're, you're buying a plane ticket or you're buying, you're reserving your hotel for Casual Connect and for some reason you show up, the, the reservation didn't go through, you had a terrible time with like hotels.com or whatever, right? Um, what research shows is basically it's gonna take 12 good experiences for you to get back for that company to get back in your, uh, your good graces. That is not something that's easy to make up, right? So the kind of takeaway with that one is basically that you have to, uh, you have to hit it right the first time. Can't mess up. Um, next data, piece of data is, it costs six to seven times to acquire versus the cost of retaining an existing customer. So if you get a customer and you lose them, you're losing money. Got it? Awesome. All right, uh, new customers spend under half of what repeat customers spend. Okay, so a lot of, there's a lot of money being poured into acquisition and you saw the chart that that guy had that was speaking before me where basically you can see the cost of acquisition are going way up versus the spend per, uh, per person. Um, so if you have a, a user base, it's extremely important that you take care of that user base and you uh, give them great customer service because they're the ones who are actually gonna be spending the vast majority of the dollars that are spent on your game. Another piece of information is that a 5% increase in retention increases your profits up to 125%. That's no joke, that's a, that's a lot. Um, so if you guys can actually just buckle down on your retention, make sure you get good customer service in, pl in, in place, then you're going, to, uh, you're going to make more money. It's just that simple. So does anybody in here have a doubt as to why customer service is super important at this point? Okay, cool, so what can you do about it? So the first thing that you can do about it is basically make take really solid steps to understand your user base. You have to understand what the demographics of your user base are. Um, random person working on a game in here. You working on a game? What's your demographic? Uh, men and women age 35 
Okay, that's good. That's a great start. Um, basically, you, you really should be in touch with who exactly is playing your game. And I mean, that might be your target, right? But actually knowing who is playing your game uh, makes a huge difference because that way you can actually customize and target your customer your customer service based on who is actually on the receiving end of that customer service. You're not going to treat that user the same as you would treat like a you know six to ten year old female, right? I mean you're 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 going to expect different things out of them. You're going to make different design decisions. You're going to respond to them differently um, when you're when you're actually providing customer support, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the platform is hugely important. Um, people, who in here is making a PC game? PC? Nobody? Okay. PC game. Uh, console game. Anybody making console games? Mobile games. Okay, cool. So what's the difference, let's say, just uh, between somebody who's making, uh, somebody who's playing a PC game and somebody who's playing a console game? Yep. Yep. Connection to the internet. Um, so in terms of customer service, a huge difference is the fact that they, uh, PC users are much, much, much more likely to go onto a forum and look up, look up and try to find uh, solutions to issues. This is actually true for, um, this is actually not true for mobile people and console people. They, if they have a problem with your game, mobile people will just drop your game. Um, so. Therefore, it's pretty important to be able to, ha to have help, um, help like facts, these different types of things built into your game or easily accessible through your game. Uh, your business model is super important as well. Uh, free to play is, is treated entirely differently from a customer service perspective than console. Um, I mean, that's pretty obvious. Don't want to get too much into that. Uh, staff appropriately. Like I said before, I asked you guys, you know, who, who actually has dedicated uh, customer service people. Some of you do, that's fantastic. Some of you don't. Seriously consider hiring somebody for this. Um, it's not that expensive to have somebody uh, actually just check in once in a while, handle the customer service side of things. Um, you can pay somebody probably like eight bucks an hour to do this. It's, it's, it's something that's well worth the money that you're gonna be spending as long as you have like any type of money whatsoever. I'm completely familiar with the fact that like a lot of us actually don't have this. So if, if you don't have the money to hire somebody, you need to set aside time to do this. It's extremely important. Like I said, 5% retention increase increases your profits by 125%. If your profits are zero, well, do the math. Uh, so also, uh, you said you go online, you check the uh, you check the uh, the forums all the time, right? And you see, or, I'm sorry, you check uh, user comments on your game. Um, it's super easy for us as developers. I'm game designer as well. Super easy for us to just see a bad comment, ignore it, right? Or go, you know what, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about, or you know, girl doesn't know what she's talking about, whatever. It's super easy to do that. You can't. Um, some, a friend of mine runs a company that makes this game called Football Heroes. And what they do, you guys familiar with it? Ever played it? Yeah, super awesome game. So what they do is every single morning, they go into the, the conference room and they start off the day by writing on the whiteboard um, a really awesome user comment and a really horrible user comment. And everybody has to sit there and look at it and, and kind of uh, the, the boss sits there and reads it out. And Everybody's got to face it, right? I mean, this is the same thing. Anybody here artists? You artists? Kind of? Okay, so if you're in art school, one of the first things they do is they actually put you through crits, right? Where they put your stuff on a wall, and they have everybody in the class go through, and they tell you how crappy it is, right? And it's extremely important, and I suggest that all of you um, get to the point where, where you're extremely familiar, or extremely comfortable with, with just looking your flaws in the face um, and analyzing them. And funnel those comments, uh, once you've analyzed them, uh, funnel them to the appropriate people. Make sure that the people who are actually working on your games, who are doing the developing, doing the art, doing whatever, actually see the critiques that are coming back from your users. If you don't, then you know, they're never gonna, uh, they're never gonna actually see what's happening. So another thing, uh, again, that's all part of creating a culture you guys have to make a commitment to making a culture at your company um, that 
basically puts your users above every, everything else. Uh, I've got a friend who has a company called uh, Riot, and we went and I went and talked to him about you know what they do w with their customer service. They have one game that they make. It's a very successful game. Um, I asked him, why don't you guys make other games? It's a very dangerous strategy to just have kind of put all your eggs in one basket. And he goes, well, we haven't found, we, we want to focus on this game ourselves and we'd like to get a partner, but we actually haven't found a company that values the player like we do. Um, a, quick, uh, a quick example is they, they actually went and they were going to Europe and France Telecom didn't want to let them uh, have European players be able to play with um, American players. And they were like, no, sorry, can't use you. And France Telecom comes back and goes, but we're France Telecom. And they go, you know what, we don't care. Our players are more important than you. They're more important than anything. And make sure you guys, um, you guys actually uh, internalize that. So strategies you can do, you, c you have to establish some sort of ticket tracking. It, uh, you generate bugs from your QA, generate bugs from your community. Um, Integrate customer support into your meetings. Make sure that if you guys do have QA or uh, customer support people, make sure they're everywhere in your meetings. Can, can. If you're responding to users, make sure that you respond in this way. Even if you can't fix the problem right away, respond with, I can understand what you're saying, and here's what I can do for you. So even if you can't completely re do, do anything uh, to solve what it is that the user is facing, Make sure that you get on top of empathizing with the user. Reciprocity is a huge one. Um, somebody uh, told me the, uh, a story about Rackspace. Um, they had a, prob a user that was having a humongous problem, basically um, was on the phone with them for like, a half an, like an hour. Uh, halfway through it, the, person was, they, the customer service rep heard them say, you know something? I'm, you know, tell somebody else that was in the background, oh man, I'm super hungry. Customer service rep knows their address, orders them a pizza to their place. Right? They have, they have a customer for life. They put this on their web page and talk about what kind of customer service they have. Everybody wants to, be, wants to deal with Rackspace. Except for people who have problems with them. Um, let's see. Personalize your approach. Every player is a VIP. Make sure they get treated that way. Um, with loyalty, give everybody a head start. If you have some sort of a uh, loyalty program, like a card that gives you, you know, like the free sub card. If you buy 10 subs, you get, 10, uh, you get, you get one sub free. Make sure you st head start people with two, with two free, uh, free marks on their card. Um, it increases uh, lo uh, retention by something like uh, 80%. Um, and finally, design your game to appeal to intrinsic motivators. Don't um, try to... Don't try to give people, uh, essentially give people prizes to keep them going. Make sure your game is just super fun to begin with. I mean, that's, it's, it's the most difficult thing. So that's why I left it for last. Be careful. Um, crowding out an extrinsic mo motivation. So relying too much on getting peop giving people rewards for things that are fun in the first place, right? Um, there, was a, there was research done where they brought a whole bunch of little kids in and had them draw. Just, just for fun, and then uh, a couple days, a uh, couple days after that, they brought him in and gave him uh, money to draw, and then a couple days after that, they brought him back in and said, "Okay, just draw." And the little kids are like, "I'm not into it. Where's my money?" Right. So be careful. Okay. Um, also, designed by committee. Um, all this stuff that I'm saying, you know, pay attention to user feedback, this and this. You know, don't let that crowd out your own uh, design aspirations. If there's something that you really feel is important for users, uh, you know, take, the take their feedback into account, but don't let it uh, change fundamentally what it is you're trying to do. You know, just take it into account when, when you're redesigning. Um, here's all my sources. There's a lot of great stuff out there. If you can, just like take a picture of this or look it up online. Read all these things, they're super duper important. Uh, and here's my information. Thank you, Rich. We have time for a few questions, and I have an immediate question. Uh, in the olden days, and I am an old guy, we used to design games and put them in a box and sell them through brick and mortar. Right. And we made those games 100% perfect as we could. In the <laughs> modern era, 
Uh, you define a minimum viable feature set and put that out there and then iterate on it. So how does, how does that, the newer style, relate to, to uh, getting audience reaction? And, and how, how can you do this when the game's not fully fleshed out when you put it out there? Okay, so most of you guys are super familiar with um, kind of doing test beds, right? Is anybody, who here has released their game in Canada first? Nobody did that? Oh, you did? Awesome. Super smart. Okay, so a lot of people will actually do what you're saying. Um, I mean, if, I, if I'm getting you, getting you correctly, um, a lot of times we want to get the game out as quickly as we possibly can so we can get user feedback because um, user opinion is maybe one of the most important things that you could possibly have, right? So uh, what I would suggest is doing test beds, right? Put your game out before it's completely finished, before you're, before you're super crazy about it, in some place like Canada or on some sort of a, a, you know, a, a lower value platform for you. And then just really pay attention to the user feedback that comes, comes, comes back from that. Um, I've seen this kind of backfire in lots of ways. Uh, like I've been at places where I've got this boss above me and he's got an agenda and you know, user feedback comes in. He, he looks through all the user feedback and he finds the one piece of user feedback that kind of has nothing to do with, with anything else but kind of speaks to what he's saying and he kind of goes with it. But yeah, it's just um, paying attention to what everybody's saying and trying to make sure that, uh, make sure that you, uh, you iterate as quickly as possible on that feedback. We have time for one more question. Any questions from the audience? Yes, sir. Uh, she'll, give, she'll give you a mic. Oh, thanks. Um, for free-to-play games and the whole customer service aspect, um, how do you compensate for, um, you know, like if you have customers that are dissatisfied that come back and they're sort of demanding and they're like, I want this and I want this and I want this, how do you compensate for that sort of screwing up your game economy? And are you ever worried about over giving them sort of like currency and things where that can sort of prevent them from buying in the future? Absolutely. I mean, it's like the old adage says, right? Give somebody an inch, they'll take a mile. Yeah. Um, you have to. You you do have to be careful of that. And like I, like I was saying before, um, biggest thing you can do is really just like take things, take things into account, but don't don't necessarily let them dictate what your behavior is. Right? Let the customer feedback influence you, but don't necessarily let it completely dictate what your strategy is going to be. Um, and yeah, you definitely don't want to just give people things to make them go away, right? Um, for instance, uh, Saudi Arabia has a very difficult problem with this, right? They have what's called a rentier state um, because of the fact that they have a ton of money or they got a ton of money right after oil and they actually just gave out the money to the population because they didn't know what else to do with it, right? So at this point, um, they're kind of on the hook for that money, right? So if you, if you do that, if you just start giving people things, that's kind of what they're going to expect. So you gotta, you got to find the balance between taking a hard line and, and, being, and being understanding and, and, and thoughtful with people. And definitely try to find other ways around it as well that, that are kind of alternative ways to appease people. Like I was saying before, the can-can. I can understand what you're saying, and here's what I can do for you, right? Thank you very much. Rich Bissot.